the multivariate Gaussian is without a doubt the most important probability distribution in all of statistics and probability. And, or sometimes we just call it the Gaussian. And it's named after Gauss, Carl Friedrich Gauss, a giant of mathematics in the late 1700s. Well, he lived from 1777 to 1855. I looked that up ahead of time. And he was highly influential in pure and applied math. And he formulated the, the Gaussian distribution. He probably used it actually first in 1801. Give you a little history here. He probably used it, he might have used it in 1801 when he predicted. So astronomers, this is a, a picture of the, it's called, it's called a dwarf planet. It's an asteroid now. We call it astro, uh, a dwarf planet. It's Ceres. And astronomers had located Ceres in the sky. And they were really excited because they, they, it was a new planet to them. And they were tracking it, but then they lost track of it. It went behind the sun or something like that. And Gauss developed the method of least squares and he used he probably used the Gaussian distribution and he he also developed the method of maximum likelihood and he predicted where Ceres would be in the sky so that the astronomers pointed their telescopes where he said and and bang it was it was right on the money and so he he wrote up in 1809 he wrote up how he did it basically and, and that's where he introduced the Gaussian distribution, well, at least the univariate Gaussian distribution, maximum likelihood, and also the method of least square. So he, you know, so that, just that one paper was, was monumental. So that's Gauss. And why is, it, why is it that the Gaussian distribution is so, why does it pop up everywhere in, in statistics? I'm sure you've seen it. You know, if you've taken statistics, you know, everybody's seen, seen the bell curve. Well, the reason why is what's called the Central Limit Theorem, or CLT. And I, ha I have another video on the CLT, so I'm not going to go into what that is. But the guy, the, the, so this dude down here, this is Laplace, Pierre-Simon Laplace. And he was also a giant of mathematics around the same time as Gauss. He was a French mathematician, looking very, uh, very official and some kind of badges here or something. And Laplace uh, lived from 1749 to 1827. I looked that up also. And Laplace gave the first proof of the central limit theorem in 1810. So these are these are two key players. I mean, he was he must have been thinking about this distribution before, you know, even before 1809, in order to come up with his with his result. So the central limit theorem truly astonishing, and all of you know essentially. All, you know, all the theoretical applications, I mean, the, the Gaussian occupies a very, very special place in, um, not only in applications, in statistics, but also in the theory of probability. And it all, it all essentially comes down to the central limit here, why that is. All right, so what is the Gaussian? Well, first, let's remember, let's recall, let's recall the definition of a univariate Gaussian. So everybody knows a univariate Gaussian. Univariate, that's one variable, Gaussian. And that is, so we say that, or we write it this way, we say that x is a is distributed according to a univariate Gaussian or normal distribution, hence the n here with mean mu and variance sigma squared, where mu is some real number, and sigma squared is some positive real number. So this means that x has the density, so I'll say x has density, f of x equals 1 over square root of 2 pi sigma squared times e to the, sometimes we write x, minus 1 over 2 pi, uh, 2 sigma squared, no pi that time, x minus mu squared. Mu squared. And this is, this, so this is the density function for a univariate Gaussian. And this is for all, so it's defined on the whole real line. 
Ooh, I erased part of Gauss. There we go. So this is the univariate Gaussian, and everybody knows what the univariate Gaussian looks like. It's just, so I'll draw a little, just to remind you, or if you haven't seen it. So it's this, do that again. So it's this, it's this, you know, this bell-shaped sort of thing. People say it's the bell-shaped curve. It's a Gaussian. Yeah, this thing. And then mu is the center. Could be anywhere. You could shift it back and forth. And sort of the width here, sort of about, about there, so... That's, well, the square root of the variance. So that's the, the standard deviation. Sort of the width of this thing. All right. So that's, of course, you know, the univariate Gaussian. And let's extend this definition to a degenerate. We will, it will be important for the multivariate to allow for degenerate univariate Gaussians. So I'll just say degenerate univariate Gaussian, abbreviate. And for a degenerate univariate Gaussian, so the so the issue is we want to so here this sigma squared had to be strictly positive, but we want to allow sigma squared to be zero. So a degenerate with mean mu and variance zero. So we write it this way and we say it, that it's degenerate if x is identically equal to mu. In other words, so x is a is a function, if you remember the definition of a random variable. So that function equals mu for every omega in the sample space. That's what that's what these this sort of triple equals looks like. That that's I mean that's what that means. Sometimes we write this for a function to say that it's equal to this at every single value. And we say identically equals. All right, so that's a degenerate univariate Gaussian. And now we are ready for the definition of the, the, the general thing, the multivariate Gaussian, or sometimes we just say Gaussian. And here it comes. So here's the definition. A random variable, x taking values in Rn, so the, the function takes values in Rn, is Gaussian, or sometimes we say multivariate Gaussian, or, you know, so lots of different ways you could say the same thing, or normal, or multivariate normal, So this, if any linear combination, oops, if any linear combination of its components, uh, or I'll just say any linear combination is univariate Gaussian. And what does that mean? I.e., so in other words, the the, vec, uh, the the dot product of a some vector a with x. So x here is a vector, remember. And so this this is just of course the sum as i goes from one to n a i x i, where uh, x i is the i coordinate of x. In other words, this thing here. Is, so this is a scalar value, remember. This is Gaussian, or since it's one-dimensional, it's a univariate Gaussian. Oh, and that's for every vector A in Rn. So this, these are all, these are linear, these are all the linear combinations of X. So this is the definition. This is the definition of a multivariate Gaussian. And now, if you have seen multivariate Gaussian before, you might be a little confused because you might have seen a definition involving the density function of a Gaussian, a multivariable density function for a Gaussian. But it turns out that this is actually a more general definition than that one. 
because it allows for degenerate uh, a multivariable Gaussian to be generate in a certain sense, which we'll talk about in a second, whereas the density does not allow that. All right, so that's our definition, and then so let's now let's let's say we'll get to exactly what I was just talking about. So a so we'll define a degenerate. So well, I'll just say it this way. So we say that it's degenerate a multivariable Gaussian or just well I'll just say I'll just probably say Gaussian from now on. It's degenerate if oh well wait we're not quite ready for that definition yet. So first we need to say so there's a couple of remarks. Or actually we can make this a definition. Okay so here's a definition. For this notation, we write x is distributed normally with mean mu and covariance matrix C. So this means that x is multivariable. I, I'll, I'll stop saying multivariable. Is Gaussian, and the expected value of the ith coordinate for each i is mu i. So mu here is a vector, so maybe I should put that where mu is a vector in Rn, and c is c is a uh, it's a positive semi-definite symmetric positive semi-definite matrix n by n. So this means x is Gaussian with mean the mean of the ith coordinate is mu i and the covariance of the ith coordinate with the jth coordinate equals the i jth element of this covariance matrix C. So so this 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 actually implies that C is a positive semi definite matrix. You know if C satisfies this this identity for all i and j, then in fact it's posi semi definite so, and symmetric. That's e it's easy to see it's symmetric. Okay, so now we have our a little bit of notation and we know what what a what a mean and covariance matrix are. And in fact, let me just make a remark about this. So a remark is that so I'll just say mu and c uniquely determine a random variable x distributed in this well they don't determine x they determine the distribution the distribution that's normal with mean mu and covariance c could you could have two random variables with the same distribution that are not equal so it doesn't really determine the random variable but it determines the distribution. So that's a nice thing. So this these distributions are parameterized by these two these two quantities here, these parameters. Okay. So all right, so maybe if you if you aren't totally you know, if you don't remember what a posi semi semi definite matrix is, just a reminder if you remember your your linear algebra, this just means that all the eigenvalues are greater or equal to zero. Okay, well let's stop there. I'm out of time for this video and we will keep talking about the magnificent multivariable Gaussian next time. Alright, see you.